Welcome to Arsenalen. It's spring in Sweden and what could be better than taking this lovely beauty for a ride. The snow is almost gone. It was minus four in the morning but now it's a lovely spring day. So uh, we will take a ride but before I will talk a bit about the vehicle and the gun. Well Volvo got the contract for developing a new cross-country vehicle to replace the Willys Jeep and other vehicles that the Swedish Army had. There was also a demand for a vehicle that could carry this anti-tank gun. So they used the same chassis as the ordinary Volvo La Plander that came in different versions, soft top, hard top, pickup, etc. But it got a totally different body on top of it. So the chassis is the same and it's very much alike a Willys Jeep. And I would say that Volvo probably had a very good look at the Willys Jeep when they did the design of this one. So the chassis is the same, body is totally different. At the front there is a Volvo B18 1.8 liter 65 horsepower engine, four speed gearbox, high low range and of course four wheel drive. And this vehicle is a lot better in cross country performance than the Willys Jeep was and that's due to slightly bigger tires, the four-speed gearbox but it also has differential brake in the rear axle. It's not the same as differential locks but it helps a lot if you are in a situation where one wheel would start spinning. So it's a fantastic vehicle to drive. And the body, as you can see, is totally different from the rest of the family. It's a bit heavier than an ordinary Willys Jeep. 1500 kilos unloaded and with approximately 630 kilos that you can put on. So the total weight is 2200 kilos with the crew ammunition and the gun on top of it. The gun is a Bofors 90mm recoilless anti-tank gun, PVPS 1110 and it was developed during the 1950s and became the backbone of the Swedish infantry as an anti-tank killer and it was uh, quite uh, good, reliable and they were used uh, all over Sweden. It has the same principle with heat rounds as the famous AT4, one-man anti-tank rifle that has been sold all over the world and it's also the same principle as the Carl Gustav 84 millimeter. And this one is a very good gun to use. Um, it fires a small round like this one with the heat round at the front and this is the propellant. So in the Carl Gustav there's a big bang when you fire it, really big bang. But Firing this 90 millimeter with this, it's a hell of a bang. I can assure you that. And there is a big blast going out at the rear since it's a recoilless gun. So you have to have a safety distance that are quite big behind the vehicle and behind the gun. On the side there's a sight use and on top there is a small automatic rifle, a Swedish automatic rifle from 1942 that has been modified and used as a rangefinder. So before you fire the big gun you fire a small round like this with the tracer in order to establish that the 
distance that you have calculated is the correct one. So you fire this one, ping, and if it hits the target, you have the correct distance, and then you can fire the big gun. Boom! And vehicle gone. Reload about six to eight rounds per minute, but normally you fire one and then get the hell out of here because you don't want to face the enemy with a vehicle or a gun like this. So it's one shot and then disappear and then fire again from a different angle. With the cargo stub you have a firing range up to about 500 meters, which is not bad, but with this one you can fire twice the distance, 800 to 1000 meters without problem. On moving targets, a bit less, six to eight hundred meters. And ammunition for this gun developed over time. So at the end, they actually had a penetrating capacity of 800 millimeters of armor, which was quite good. From the beginning, the vehicle didn't have this roll bar, but there were a lot of accidents because of the speed of the vehicle and young drivers wanted to drive fast. And with the gun, it is quite top heavy, especially when you're turning left. It's quite easy to flip over. So they tested and found a solution with this roll bar. So you protect the crew from getting killed if it flips over. But before you can use the gun, you need to fold the roll ball and it's like this. So now it's ready for action. To load the gun, open up the breech, take out the ammunition and you put it in. It needs to be in a special angle since it's firing from the side. You put it into the gun and then lock the loader says to the gunner, it's loaded. Gunner shouts, Scott Comer, and the loader facing to the rear, checking the safety. Claude Barcott, and then bang! And we have a dead enemy.
each gun had this small trailer. So you could either tow it behind a tractor or a tracked vehicle, uh, but you could also pull it, push it by hand. And it was normally in the infantry used like this one. If you had it on a vehicle like this, you could also lift the gun off the vehicle and put it on the trailer, which you could have at the rear in the hook in order to get into a better firing position than you could with the vehicle. In some cases, the firing position for the vehicles were a bit difficult to find. So you could unhook it, put it on the trailer and come clo closer where you wanted to fire at the enemy. The drawback is that the gun only has one position in height. So if you go up behind the hill, you it's not always possible to depress as much as you want to. The later version, the Volvo C303, had a hoist mechanism, so you could go up a lot higher and then get a better firing position from, from the vehicle. But in this one, you had to find the firing position or to lift off the gun and put it on the trailer. But apart from this fantastic gun and a fantastic vehicle. So we're going to go for a ride and in this vehicle it's totally open. Uh, no heating in the cabin and we don't know why they did it like that. The only protection is this little windshield for the driver but the, the rest of the crew they are sitting in the open. And during winter time it was very cold, raining. They sat out in the rain, so in order to protect at least something, they were dressed up like ordinary dispatch riders on motorcycles with this kind of jacket and trousers and heavy boots just to survive. Because when it's minus 25 degrees, it's freezing cold in this vehicle. So uh, I will change to this jacket before we go for a ride. So, all dressed up. Let's see if it starts. Ignition on. I don't think we need a shock. Four cylinder engine, uh, 65 horsepower. Ah, it's enough, but uh, I would prefer a six cylinder or a V12 engine, but this is what we have. So let's go. These vehicles, the anti-tank Jeep, as they were called in the Swedish Army, they were, were very popular and they were used during a number of years. Apart from the obvious to fight other armored vehicles, they were also useful as if in the battalion you can use them as reconnaissance for securing a road junction or as a flank protection. So they could have many different roles and since they were quite fast you could move them from one position to another. In the winter time 
it's not very nice to be in these vehicles, but uh, the cruise, they, they did it. In the early 1980s, they were replaced by the C303, which had a similar body for the anti-tank gun and also used on the Heglund's a special cabin for the Heglund's all track terrain carrier. So they were used on them, but you could also use them on skis, etc. They were beginning to sell them out during the 1980s and they were still in use in the mid 1990s. From the approximately 360 made in total, a lot of them still survive and they are very popular among collectors. So this is a nice vehicle to have in the springtime. Hope you like it and click on the subscribe. See you next time.